300 feet beneath the English Channel, we find a feat of engineering like no other. The Channel Tunnel, stretching 31 miles, stands as the longest underwater train tunnel in the world. It's not just a tunnel, but a vibrant link between a country and a continent. Travel between England's famed White Cliffs of Dover and the French coast has transformed dramatically. Once a daunting journey by boat, now it's a swift 35-minute train ride through this underwater wonder. It's quite a pleasant experience, actually. It's much nicer than traveling on a, a boat or the sea cat or anything else, because it's not so choppy. The weather's guaranteed down under the tunnel. So it's quite nice. Building this tunnel was no small feat. It took 7,000 workers, seven years, and nearly $14 billion to complete. Battling harsh environments, they drilled not one, but three tunnels, creating a path deep beneath the seabed. To drive a tunnel 30 miles uh, through chalk uh, and to then fit it out as a railway system, uh, to build two very large road rail interchanges at each end, uh, and to uh, complete the project was, was an achievement. Uh, it's, it really is a, another wonder of the world that, that it was done at all. The teams faced more than just geological hurdles. A cultural divide and deep-rooted skepticism had to be overcome. This was about connecting two lands separated for 8,000 years, a testament to human imagination and persistence. Here we were connecting two countries that hadn't been connected for 8,000 years. Uh, it was a huge uh, advance in imagination, in technique, uh, and in sheer persistence to get it done. The site workers used to say this is, you know, the biggest thing since the pyramids. Sort of thing, you know. I mean, it, it, it is, as an engineering feat, it, it's absolutely phenomenal. The dream of a channel tunnel dates back to 1785, from hot air balloon crossings to ambitious but impractical plans during times of war. Each attempt, a stepping stone leading to the ultimate realization of this underwater passage, this 1881 tunnel was driven in the same chalk marl that we chose in 1985. The geologists knew that this was the best stratum. What they couldn't be sure of at that time was whether it went all the way across to France. I don't think they actually developed the notion of how you would get this tunnel all the way across. I think government said, prove to us that you can bore a tunnel in this material and that you know where to bore it. Uh, and that they did. And the tunnel is, what, about seven feet in diameter. You can walk down it, and we did walk down it. Uh, and this rotary machine cut a beautiful, smooth, circular bore uh, in, in the chalk. So it demonstrated it could be done. The advent of the tunnel boring machine revolutionized tunnel construction. The 1881 attempt made significant progress hinting at the possibility of a successful channel link. This laid the groundwork for the future. The Brits, I suppose, uh, we're, we're an island race, uh, and for generations we have felt safe uh, from uh, invasion because of this narrow strip of water. Uh, it doesn't make any sense in today's terms, but it stopped the Romans for a long while, and uh, it actually kept Hitler on the right side of the water. I can remember in the days when uh, I was trying to sell this idea to the public in 1985, uh, having old ladies wave umbrellas at me from the front row saying, you rascal, you know, you, we don't want to be connected to the French, there, there's a danger. In the mid-20th century, despite promising geological discoveries, political and practical concerns halted progress. The notion of physically connecting Britain to Europe remained contentious and challenging. It's really quite remarkable that, that these two particular leaders should have decided to get the act together and do it. But I think they uh, each saw a wider political advantage to having their name upon this scheme. Uh, they knew that it could be done. The Channel Tunnel idea, once dormant, was revived in the 1980s. Thatcher and Mitterrand, unlikely allies, saw the political and practical benefits. This marked the beginning of the tunnel as we know it today.
The heart of the tunnel construction was the state-of-the-art boring machine. A marvel of engineering, it combined raw power with precision technology. As it carved through miles of earth, creating the pathway for the Euro Tunnel, teams of engineers and workers collaborated seamlessly, overcoming geological complexities to bring this ambitious project to life. Although you always specify that that borehole gets filled with concrete afterwards, uh, contractors have a nasty habit of forgetting to put the cement in. And so you get a borehole full of stones. And you don't want, in an underwater tunnel, to intersect a hole full of stones that the water can rush down. So all we had to do before we started was to try to determine precisely where over 3,000 boreholes of the 200 years had been sunk into the bed of the channel so as to avoid them with our boring machine. And because we didn't know with great precision where they were, instead of saying each hole is six inches in diameter, we said each hole is 30 feet in diameter. They were excavated first one side, then the other, and then they, they, they ate away at the center section. When you went in there during the construction phase, it was awesome, watching them bit by bit, piece by piece, section by section, line the walls, put the traps in, put the floor down, put the doors in, and all of it had to be taken in bit by bit and constructed in situ. It's absolutely fantastic, but they just did it like piecing a giant jigsaw together in this mess. Construction of the tunnel was a monumental task, with numerous challenges from water influx to logistics. The use of advanced boring machines and careful geological tracking ensured steady progress despite setbacks. It's a massively impressive tool. The frightening environment, I remember distinctly the first time I went into a tunnel boring machine working, you had to go on to a very, very tight walkway with a conveyor going above you with all the spoil coming from the face. And you'd walk up through all this complex machinery that was lifting segments of concrete these huge segment linings, nine, nine tons each. And you had to literally creep through these tight, compact areas of the head of the tunnel boring machine to get into the little bit at the front end which actually was doing the work. All the rest of it was mechanically driven, but right at the front, just behind the head, was the guys who were actually putting the linings up onto the wall of the tunnel. It would take about 20 minutes to erect a complete ring of lining behind the tunnel boring machine. So, provided you could excavate that metre and a half ring width in the same 20 minutes, the machine never had to actually stand at the face of one of these things is massively impressive. If you're talking sort of seven metres across, with all these little cups and you think, how on earth is this going to dig through the ground? But of course it does. So it just literally eats it away as it goes. After years of relentless effort, the tunnel breakthrough was a moment of historical significance. British and French workers meeting beneath the channel symbolized not just a physical connection, but a cultural and technological triumph. Ladies and gentlemen, just about four hours ago, for the very first time since the end of the Ice Age, it became possible for the people of Britain to walk to France and for the people of France to walk to the United Kingdom. And when the tunnel junction it's a great excitement that nobody had walked from England to France for 8,000 years, probably. So when the hole was broken through, we rushed through into the French side where there were two tables laden with Jeroboam's of, uh, of uh, champagne. A lot of them were ready poured into fruits for us to drink, which we did. Uh, the French, of course, rushed into the English side where there were similar two tables uh, laden with plastic cups and mineral water and the Entente Cordiale nearly collapsed at that point. <laughs> Today, the Channel Tunnel stands as a vital artery for transport and trade. Its existence, a reminder of what human ambition and engineering can achieve, linking countries, economies, and people. The Channel Tunnel, more than just a modern wonder, is a testament to human ingenuity, a bridge between past and future, and a symbol of connection in an ever closer world.
We hope you've enjoyed exploring the fascinating stories and events that have shaped our world. If you found this video informative and entertaining, don't forget to hit that like button and share it with your friends and family. By subscribing to our channel, you'll never miss out on any of our future content, covering everything from ancient civilizations to modern day events. We love hearing from our viewers, so please leave a comment below and let us know what topics you'd like us to cover next. Your support means the world to us, and it helps us continue to create engaging and educational content for you. So remember to like, share, subscribe, and comment, and together, let's keep exploring the captivating stories of our world.